Hi, my name's Garrett. I'm an English 201 student in the spring of 2022. The following content is a video essay concerning the Uyghur genocide in China. Enjoy. Genocide is something that we all grow up learning about. We learn about the Holocaust, the Armenian genocide, and other atrocious events that have unfortunately taken place throughout history. Today, we face yet another threat of genocide, and many people have never heard anything about it. The Uyghur population that currently resides in western China has culturally state claim to land spanning many miles across the Asian continent. The Uyghur population practices Islam. The contrast in religion, along with other socioeconomic stressors, pushed us into a very dangerous situation where we see the Chinese government committing acts similar to what can be historically defined as genocide. For example, in the early days of Nazi Germany, there were a number of anti-Jewish laws that were passed. These laws limited religious freedoms and notoriously created a system that ostracized the Jewish people from the greater German population. Earlier in history, the Armenian genocide that took place in the Ottoman Empire during World War I was covered up for decades, and still to this day, people are trying to fight for the truth. As I said, the similarities we see today in China and past examples of genocide are astonishing. China is currently in the process of passing laws that make it illegal to be part of the Uyghur culture. They are also attacking and imprisoning members of the Uyghur population as a result of China's war on terror, which sounds very similar to the claims of the Ottoman Empire during World War I. While you may have never heard of the Uyghur population, there are some who have, and there are a few researchers who are bold enough to investigate the events happening in western China. A report by the United States Holocaust Museum has done exactly what I've done here. They've pointed out the distinct similarities between past genocides and what's currently going on in China. Other researchers, like Mark Amzutz, have has covered the overwhelming negative aftermath that genocides had on countries like Germany, Armenia, Rwanda, especially after the Rwandan genocide in the 1990s. These countries struggle greatly with their sense of national pride, and in some cases, the aftermath of genocide has completely derailed those social, political, and economic systems. You would think, after multiple instances of genocide and seeing the pain that it causes, the world would do something to ensure that it never happens again. Unfortunately, that isn't the case. In 2020, Sierra Finnegan, an international law student, outlines why there has been such a lack of attention or action taken in China. She breaks down the legality of genocide and studies international laws that are meant to protect people from genocide. According to her research, there are major loopholes in international laws concerning genocide. And because these laws protect against intervention when no laws have been broken, they actually inadvertently protect China and their activities taking place against the weaker population. I think, given the world's history of genocide, this would be a bigger issue, right? Of course not. There's a reason I'm doing this presentation. The lack of action or rhetoric surrounding the weaker genocide is telling. Some researchers like Dirk Moses in his review of Key Words by Raymond Williams claim that the silence coming from the US and the UK stems from their own acts of genocide that took place during the age of imperialism. Moses says that if they were to attempt to act against China and their genocide, that Ch China could delegitimize their action by pointing to the US and the UK's history of genocide against indigenous populations all over the world. My argument comes in. The US and the UK are the world's most powerful duo, and the weight they carry on the world stage is more than enough to garner action from other countries against China to help stop the Uyghur genocide. However, the executive branch of the US, in particular, seems somewhat unbothered by China's actions. And while they've spoken out against China, they've made no meaningful moves to help end the atrocities. I argue that as generations who have grown up and learned about genocide and how awful it truly is, we must now take action into our own hands, not physically, but democratically. Because the only reason that the executive branch of our government has power is because of us, we must use that leverage and force the conversation to the light and force these candidates to address the situation. As we've seen, or not seen, there has been no emphasis on this topic, and because of that, the media coverage has been light, meaning no real action has been taken to end the genocide and to change the international laws so that in the future, 
the world is no longer at, lo- at risk for, for losing an entire culture because of one tyrannical government's contrast in ideologies. There are cases against action. Some would say that action against China will destroy our economy and potentially cause a major war. This is true. However, the U.S. were to gain alliance from every other country in the world. China could simply not just refuse to comply with the demands that are being made. For simplicity, the good that comes with action against China and their genocide far outweigh the bads that come with inaction and simply letting China get away with genocide. I know that many people will ask why they should care about a small group of Muslims in the rural region of China. I understand the indifference, but while researching, I kept asking myself, how would I feel if this were happening in my country, to my neighbors, or to my family? We simply cannot let another genocide go unnoticed. As humans, we suffer the loss of every culture, no matter how far removed we are. Thank you for watching.